Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I'm going to show you something new and different that you can do with Punchinella. Punchinella is a ribbon that is left behind when sequins are punched out of it. So sometimes it's called sequin waste or Punchinella because the sequins are punched out. The discs of the sequins are punched out. So the material that's left behind is basically a mylar plastic that is durable and works as a mask on the gel plate just like a stencil would. Uh, but today I'm gonna to show you how to use it in a little bit of a different way. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check this stuff out. Welcome back. So I'm in the studio and I've got um, my gel plate. I've got my um, golden fluid acrylics. I've got some makeup wedge sponges. I've got my brand new fancy brayer and some paper off to the side to roll the paint off of to clean between colors. I've got some old book pages that I'm going to be using as paper. And I suggest that you use some found papers in the beginning when you're experimenting and practicing with new techniques rather than going right to your expensive pad of rice paper until you sort of get the hang of it. So, and then I've got this wonderful packet of vintage Punchinella that has become available because my dear friend and retired public high school art teacher, Gail, has cleared out her stash and she has found some wonderful vintage Punchinella that she's had for a long time in her studio and in her retirement she is clearing things out and she has put together uh, these wonderful packets uh, that are available um, to purchase uh, this week. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you yet another way to use your gel plate to um, with Punchinella. Now the, the typical way that I do it is that I roll the paint out and put the punchinella on just in the same way that you would use a stencil. But today I'm going to be sponging some paint through the punchinella onto the plate and then go from there. So let's start obviously when I work with layers in creating collage paper, I always start with my lightest shade. So of the colors that I've got out here, I think my lightest shade is probably the dairy light yellow, but I've also got some iridescent uh, bright gold. So we could start with a layer of, um, or a section of gold metallic. So I'm gonna squeeze that out. Oh, who's in charge of ordering paint around here? That's sounding empty. Um, and I'm going to take the makeup sponge, put a little paint on it, and I am going to just dab it onto the plate through the punchinella. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can mix up colors. Uh, so I've got some Indian yellow, and I could go... That's a little darker and I could put a little bit of that on my sponge and sort of variate, uh, variegate <laughs> my yellow and gold for a little more interesting color. So now I'm going to lift this up, set it aside, and I've got this wonderful big large circle pattern on my plate. So the next one I'm going to use is this one. This is really fun. And I'm going to lay that over assuming this is dry. It's going to take a minute for that to dry. So let's come down this end because I would like to overlap some of my next one. So down here, I'm going to use a different one. Down here, I'm going to use these medium holes and I'm going to go um, to a slightly darker color. So I've got some pyrrole red light um, and I'm going to mix that in with the makeup sponge into my uh, gold. So I'll have sort of like a golden orange and I'm going to put that through here. And just like the other one, I'm going to um, go for this uh, variegation of color. So I'm going to grab some quinacridone nickel azo gold and add that with my sponge. And that's a pretty light color. So hopefully we can see the variation between that and the pyrrole. And I'm gonna lift that one up. We got a little bit of it in the middle there. So I'm setting the punchinella off to the side. You would wanna have a, a soapy basin, a basin of soapy water, so you could toss the punchinella in there and rinse it off real quick before the paint dries. I'm gonna get a new sponge here and I'm gonna switch uh, now to um, quinacridone magenta, 
which would also look nice with the gold blended into it. And by now, this, you know, it's still a little wet. This should be dry enough for us to sponge over. If we sponge into it a little bit wet, it could give us interesting results. So let's not be afraid of that, wet into wet. And I'm gonna lay this one just over that a little. And I'm gonna come in with magenta. over the edge of the gold pattern. And then I'm gonna bring out some orange, pyro orange, and blend that in with the magenta. So that did go over really nicely. Those holes are pretty far spread apart, which is really nice because it makes them very different from the other pieces we're using. So I've got now even a smaller one, and I'm gonna put that right here. And let's do uh, some of the, let's do some more of the gold or the, um, yeah, let's do some more of the gold next to that. So I'm gonna grab a new makeup sponge uh, so I can get a nice pure gold here. And I'm gonna do a little bit of that with a little bit of the Indian yellow. Grab a little bit of some other things that are on my palette. You never know. Here's a little magenta. So, you know, mixing and blending and sort of creating this series of dots that are visually interesting. So I've got a little bit of the edge over here. I could put another set. I really like those big ones. Um, so I don't mind that edge. I could do a set of the big ones in the middle, but I don't wanna get too busy here. So um, let's see, could do one row of them, perhaps a thin row right here. And let's go with the pyro orange, pyro red, I'm sorry and just do a few. We don't have to do the whole strip. We can just do a few. And now we're getting some creative spot patterns. So you don't always have to do the whole strip. You can do a few here and there. Like we can bring this wide one in over here and we could add the magenta. And do a few. That's really fun. And I would like to add one more row. There we go. And perhaps one more row of the big down this end. So I'm taking my time to sort of curate this and make it look interesting. I'm going to go with the orange down on this end. There we go. And I think we could use a little, one more row of the smaller right here down the middle of those big uh, separated dots. And we're going to do that with the yellow, the dairy light yellow. So I'm going to do just a thin little bit. Oh, that's nice. I like that. So we could do a little more of that, you know, um, perhaps on this end with the same uh, light yellow. Just a little bit. There, that's fun. Fun, fun, fun. So those are the all the different patterns of the Punchinella overlaid putting them onto the plate. And now the idea is to let that dry, believe it or not. And then we're gonna come back with paint. We're gonna put a layer of paint across the whole print, and then we're gonna pull it. And it is gonna lift up all the dots that are dried 
with the second layer of wet paint because that's the job of the gel plate. The gel plate, when you put the layer of paint on it, releases everything that was stuck to it previously. So you get these wonderful layers when you work in the gel plate because you get artifacts and little bits of paint from every previous print. When you put more paint on it, the gel plate releases all the paint. So our next job is to decide what color are we gonna go over all this with? And that needs to be a contrasting color. We don't wanna go over it with yellow because we'll lose our yellows. So we could go over it with teal. That would be kind of cool, teal with the yellows, but teal might be overpowering. We could go over it with uh, green, but that could be kind of funky with the magenta. Um, we could go over it with something totally different, like uh, bronze. So many choices, but we want a high contrast. So we've got some 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 light, some medium, and some dark color in here. So we're going to want to go over it with something that's going to sort of contrast all of that. So I'm thinking that the teal, even though it's going to be pretty bold, might be our best bet. And everybody loves teal, so why not? So let me grab some teal, and we will put that on our book page and see what happens. So here's the... Um, the deal with teal. So you can see that the, uh, let's see, the um, swipes on the front of the containers of golden fluid acrylic is actual paint. And it's there not only to show you what color the paint is, but it's also there to show you how translucent the pigment is. So you can see that quinacridone nickel azo gold is pretty translucent because you can see those black tick marks through that really, really clearly. You can see the black tick marks through pyrrole red light a little bit less than you can see it through azo gold, but you cannot see the tick marks through the teal at all whatsoever. So the teal is one of the few colors, pigments, that is really completely opaque. So that means that that's going to be solid and we won't even see the um, text on the page through it where the teal is 100%. So I'm trying to give this uh, time to dry and it should be dry by now because it's quite warm out here, but you want it to be dry and we should be there now. So we're going to put out a couple of drops of the teal right over this pattern. Don't be afraid. And we're gonna roll it with this fancy brayer that has never been used before. This is the beginning of the fancy brayer. You witnessed it first right here on Tutorial Tidbits. So I'm gonna roll this out in a nice thin layer right over what we put down with the punchinella and gently, just enough to spread it. Isn't that beautiful? So now I'm gonna roll that brayer off onto a clean sheet of paper to get all the paint off that I can while it's wet. That is how you take good care of your tools. Okay, so now we've got our prepared sheet and we are going to pull the Punchinella, vintage Punchinella patterns that we sponged onto the plate because this teal paint is going to cause the plate to release all previous layers. And here's the reveal. Beautiful, beautiful layering of the Punchinella dots in all the different sizes. And not a bad color combo. I like it. The teal works because it is um, lighter than the darks and mediums, and it is contrasting, high contrasting to the gold. So it is a good color choice because it's not allowing any of our previous layers to disappear into it. But that just takes some practice and experimentation. And so that's another way that you can use Punchinella on the gel plate. So happy Friday, and thank you for being here. And if you're interested in more tutorials like my tutorial tidbits, but more in depth, meaning 15 to 20 minutes a piece, um, please join me on Patreon. My Patreon page is patreon.com slash Elizabeth St. Hilaire. It's a monthly subscription and I publish full length in-depth tutorial videos every single week.